Welcome to Celebrity Tastemakers. I'm Lisa Mateo. From the hottest restaurants to local dives, celebrities always know where to eat, and here's your chance to join them. Come along for the ride as our guests share their favorite meal, and the chefs that make them teach you the recipe. That's all part of Celebrity Tastemakers, your reservation to food and fame. Frank Sinatra sang of New York, if you can make it there, you'll make it anywhere. Well, Mark Simone has not only made it here, but is one of New York's most respected voices. For 35 years, he's informed and entertained millions of friends, fans, and followers on the radio and online. We're riding with the verbal jack of all trades and master of many, and going inside the sanctuary of the Friars Club, because Mark Simone is not just a newsmaker, but a tastemaker. Mark Simone. Hey. Come on in. How are you? Are oh we on God. already? We are. We oh are my rolling. God. What is this, a TV show or a kidnapping? <laughs> well, I watch this show. You're a big show. Thank you, you. You can't afford a studio? We're going to do it in the car? That's right. we got to get every single moment of this. Now, I love that Seinfeld show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. There you go. But all he gives you is coffee. With you, it's a whole meal. This whole is a meal. better show. I'm telling you. Much better. Wine and dining you. By the way, where are we going? The Friars Club. Frank Sinatra was the head of the club for a million years. Jerry Lewis is the current head of the club. The most famous performers, stars, comedians. Now, what are we going to eat? They have this lemon chicken that's not only delicious, but you couldn't have anything healthier. It's chicken, broccoli, beautiful lemon flavor. That sounds good. Let's go. The Friars Club, we're going on hollowed ground. We're actually going to go in the Frank Sinatra dining room. We're going to sit at his table. Dean Martin, a Rat Pack, used to hang out there. Jimmy Fallon is now a friar. He loves the club, but he, he said his inspiration was Johnny Carson, and he knew that Carson spent a lot of his time at the Friars Club. He was one of the officers of the club, and Carson went there because Jack Benny was his idol, and he was a big part of the Friars Club. So it's got this incredible tradition. Talk to me about when you first started in radio. My father would take me to his office. He thought, this would be great. You'll see what, what people do in an office. It looked very boring. There was, like, computers and desks. and But on the way there in the car, there was a guy on the radio. This guy was having the time of his life. He was playing music. He was talking to celebrities. And I said, that's the guy that you should be. Howard Stern told me the same story once, that his father would take him to work, but he'd hear the guy on the radio have more fun than anybody. And if you listen to my show now, we can talk about any kind of music, anything in entertainment. It's not like old talk radio where we're going to talk about Obamacare for an hour. If you listen to me, the subject changes every 26 seconds. You've interviewed Sinatra. You have Seinfeld, Bob Hope. Seinfeld is a great guest because he's really interesting about things. He's a lot more serious and more philosophical than you think. What have you learned from some of those people that you have interviewed? I remember talking to Johnny Carson once. This is if you do a national show. He said, speak to the heartland. And the other thing he always taught me, you ever see comedian, he gets up on stage, he's kind of behind the audience, they're a step ahead of him. He said, if it's the other way around and you're a step ahead of the audience, that's just as bad. You've got to be right in sync with them. If you can talk to any fictional character. The most fascinating thing is when you talk to people from your childhood. Jerry Mathers, he was Leave it to Beaver. The Beave. The Beave, or Marianne and Ginger from Gilligan's Island. You know, he's a very funny guy, he's one of the best guests, is uh, Adam West. Batman! Who's the original Batman. <laughs> He's so funny and witty. I have him on all the time, but that, yeah. that voice, it, it's like you keep pinching yourself. You're talking to Batman. I guess in a way I've talked to all these fictional characters that I love. We know you on your radio show, of course, but you also fill in for a lot of people. Yeah, you know, when you fill in for Sean Hannity, do you know on the radio, Sean Hannity has, it's like 17 million listeners. That's more than American Idol. That's more than any TV show. Now imagine you push this button and 17 million people are listening. It's unbelievable what that show can do. And like, if you have an author on, the guy's book is like number 25,000. We put him on that show in 90 seconds, number one on Amazon. And it's a great responsibility. You always have to bear that in mind. But you also help people at the same time. There are times like 9-11. Uh, I was on the air for like 12 hours overnight. And to this day, somebody comes up to me and they say, I was 14 years old. My parents put me in my bedroom, turned the lights off. I was terrified. I listened to you all night on the radio. You made me feel safe, and I got through that night. Hurricane Sandy was not long ago. You forget what an important service radio is. It's, it's like the last line of defense. In a blackout, your cable's out, everything's out, your internet's out, and all you got is that battery-operated radio. That's really important to people. What does that mean to you? I don't know if you know this. The radio is the most used medium on Earth from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. More people use radio than the internet or television. How have you given back to the community of New York? WOR 710 is involved in so many charities and so many causes. 
And uh, I, I work, uh, you hear that police siren? Yeah. I work with the Police Athletic League. What they do is amazing. They have the, the PAL centers, these PAL centers. They're enormous, state of the art. They're in the worst neighborhoods in New York. That's where a kid comes who needs anything. If he needs a place to be, a safe place, if he needs to learn how to use computers or work with computers, if he needs job training, nobody does better work than the Police Athletic League. You mentioned a lot of the famous people who are part of the Friars Club. Tell me a good Friars Club story that kind of defines what the Friars Club is to you. you been to a Friars Club roast? No, Those but are would love to. Amazing things you've ever seen. One writer called it the Super Bowl of comedy. It is the funniest event you will ever see. The night before the roast, we always have like a private dinner party. That's usually a hundred times funnier, but we can't show that to anybody. Too dirty? It's not that it's too dirty. The jokes there are so inside, but much funnier. Our executive producer, Danny Aiello, part of the Friars Club oh, as well. Oh, he's a big part of the Friars Club. You know he's a brilliant actor. Yes, of course. But you should see, when he's at a Friars roast, he is a funny guy. He's a great comedian. One day he said he wanted to sing. This was years ago, and he was going to sing at the Friars Club, and nobody knew what to make of this. He was phenomenal. He's like a great, great he's a singer. He's a great singer, yes. He put out his first CD, but it was like number three on the jazz charts, like in two weeks. I've seen him play Atlantic City, the Rainbow Room. He's, he's excellent. He's always at the Friars Club. He might even be there today. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, welcome back to the Friars Club. He's never this nice to me when there aren't TV cameras here, <laughs> but he is the brains behind this operation. Nice to meet you. Carilo, welcome to the Friars Club. It's a pleasure to have you. And I'm going to take you to the kitchen to show you how we prepare Mark's favorite dish. Mark, oh. Michael's waiting for you back there. After I'm you. going to take Lisa with me, please. Thank you. Giuseppe has taken off his jacket. It's about to get serious, you know that. Giuseppe, yes. now you're the director of food and beverage, but you're in the kitchen today. You introduced this dish to Mark. That's correct. This is one of my favorite dishes that I cook at home. And we decided with our chef to introduce it to our members. And one of my first one was actually Mark, and he loved it. And since then, he orders almost every time he comes here. What do we need to make this? Very simple dish to make. We need uh, half a chicken, broccoli, chicken stock, lemon, thyme, salt and pepper, Later on, we're going to need some oil and some white wine. That's all. What are some other signature dishes that people like to order here? Believe it or not, club sandwiches, hamburgers. Club sandwiches? We have a fantastic chili sea bass roasted, served with uh, leeks and mushroom, and a champagne sauce, Dover Sol, one of the best in the city. Uh, people rave about it. Chow mein. Chow mein. Jimmy Fallon's favorite. You have a big clientele to impress here. Yes, we do. Is that a lot of pressure? Yes, the time today, <laughs> yes. All right, so let's get started. What's the first step? This is the chicken. We cut it in uh, quarters, cut it in a half, okay. and you cut the breast in a half again. A little muscle into that. And then you cut it right at the joint. Salt. Pepper. This is white pepper, that's why you don't see any coloring. Thyme, chopped up. Fresh thyme. Fresh thyme, mm. always fresh. Put it on top. We squeeze some lemon on it. This is basically like the marinade. That's the marinade. And this marinades for about two hours. You always want to season the meat on both sides. But this goes into the fridge for about two hours. We have some that we prepared already before. You've done it for us. Yes. First, we're going to sear it in a pan with olive oil. Once the meat is seared, we're going to finish it up in the oven with a little bit of white wine and chicken stock. It's going to cook for about 15 minutes in the oven. We deglaze the pan to make a nice lemon sauce that goes over the chicken. It's a really, really healthy dish. Okay, and now we're gonna cook it. A little olive oil, put the chicken skin down. It's nice and crispy. So you have to have it on high heat just on to get very that sear. Heat, right, we sear the chicken two minutes on each side. Then we add some white wine, uh, a little chicken stock, and we finish it up in the oven for about 15 minutes. It gets nice and crispy. Mark is gonna love it. I'm gonna go join him back at the table. Very good, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Friars Club. This is the table Frank Sinatra used to eat at. This is the table our abbot Jerry Lewis eats at. This is our executive director, Michael Jury. Michael, great we're, spread, by the way. <laughs> we're, we're, we're thrilled that you can enjoy it. This is a, a selection of some of our most popular items. That's tuna tartare. It's extraordinary. They put <laughs> little pieces of apple in it. Now, what else do we have here? A very creamy burrata with heirloom tomatoes, and this is with wild arugula, beefsteak uh, tomatoes, a selection of antipasti with pecorino cheeses and some salami, 
And that is one of the specialties of the house, Nova Scotia salmon, from a recipe that comes back from the very early days of the club. When we moved into this clubhouse in 1955 from the old place, we had in the vaults all these wonderful photographs and audio tapes of some of our great early events, the Caruso roast in 1916. And the most important thing that Georgie Jessel and Milton Bell said when they moved into the building is don't lose the recipe for the house smoked salmon. Everybody has their own uh, favorite thing. Jimmy Fallon loves the chow mein. And what is Jerry Lewis's favorite dish? He loves the brisket. He has a recipe that he tweaks slightly with our chef. Tell us about your role here. I've been here seven years. I'm the executive director. I am the producer of the roasts, and I work closely with the uh, entertainment committee on the 100 activities that we have throughout the year. This is where the roast originated. Yeah, actually, and, and you know, they say the roasts are like the Super Bowl of comedy. The Don Rickles night, people still talk about it. It's one of the greatest nights ever. Joan Rivers was performing, uh, Billy Bob Crystal Newhart was performing, and then we had Tony Bennett, that was Robert De Niro, and uh, he actually did the most amazing thing where he was silent for about 45 seconds as part of what he was doing, this tribute to Don Rickles, and during that 45 seconds, he, the entire 1,000 people in the audience were laughing hysterically. Nobody laughing more than, than Don Rickles himself in the front row. And we raise a lot of money for good causes. It's really for the Friars Foundation, which is the charitable arm of the club. They do work with the uh, Wounded Warriors. We also have a, an Adopt-a-Scholar program where we pay for scholarships for students in the performing arts. How long has the Friars Club been around? Over 100 years. The Friars Club was founded 110 years ago, 1904, and this is our third location. It originally started off as a vaudevillian club. Our golden era in those times was, was the 1920s. Then we fell on tough times like the rest of the country did with the Great Depression. Everybody came back in the 40s with the Milton Burles and Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. Jerry Lewis was active in the club then. He's our abbot now, our chairman of the board right now. Alan King was the chairman before him. And Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra for many for, years. For 23 years before Alan King, yeah. Ed Sullivan before that. I don't think you name anybody that hasn't set foot in this dining room or performed in this dining room, from Sinatra to any comedian you can name. What was it like the first time you stepped foot in this dining room? They were like two of the legends of comedy, Milton Berle and George Burns, and they were screaming at each other and fighting. <laughs> <laughs> it was unlike any other club I'd ever seen before. Just very recently, I see somebody at the door, and it's a little bit later, it's about 3.30, and the dining room officially has stopped seating people. Mm -hmm. But you can recognize the silhouette. It's a gentleman with a hat, and Giuseppe very quickly, our matron, he picks it up, and brings Elvis Costello with one of his twin sons to sit at the banquet over here. And because uh, Elvis had his back to the room, he didn't see Jerry Lewis sitting here. And then about five minutes later, you hear a clang and a, a chair gets knocked over. And I'm looking, there's somebody with a black woolen hat and he's wearing all black. He walks in, he grabs some silverware, puts them on a, pl on a, on a, on a plate. And it's somebody doing an impersonation of Jerry Lewis with his original act with Dean and Jerry. Right. Dean and he knocks over a chair, and, he, and I'm looking at Elvis, who's sitting over here, and he's going like this every time a louder noise happens, but he doesn't turn around. And then suddenly, this person comes right up to Jerry, tips the silverware all over Jerry, and says, ah, ah, they're all laughing, everybody's looking, the whole table's looking. <laughs> Elvis is nervous as can be, he sees it's his friend Richard Belzer who's doing an impersonation of Jerry. They hug, they embrace each other, and he says, I did it for Jerry. He says, you mean Jerry's here? Jerry Lewis, he le leaps up and he sees Jerry, he comes over, they hug, they take him home. We didn't know. Wow. Elvis Costello's idol yeah. is Jerry Lewis. You always leave in a better mood than when you arrived. And the name Friar. There's obviously a, a monastic reference there. It's Friar really just means brotherhood, brother. So okay. there's no real uh, connection to any religion whatsoever other than the religion of humor and having a good time. And that's our, our motto behind us there, Pray Omnia Fraternitas, before all brotherhood. So just being one and being with each other and like-minded individuals having a lot of fun. Although if you come in here, there's always fights everywhere in the dining room. <laughs> like brothers. Yeah, it's food bonus, but uh, we try to stick to the motto. Now this Gosh. looks amazing. What do you have here? Well, this is a lamb shank, braised over eight hours, infused with lots of herbs, and, and served over a little bean base with a little pancetta. And uh, again, it's one of the favorites. You have to be very hungry to eat this, but once you taste it, you'll finish the whole thing. It's so good. Well, I might have to. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, why not? Oh, this one looks, looks delicious. Yeah, that I looks know. Great too. That's the Chilean this. sea bass, yeah, with oh, a little uh, a caviar, leek, and champagne sauce. Yeah, now if we weren't on TV, I'd be probably having the cheeseburger, the best one in New York. But at night, I always love this. This is the healthiest, most delicious dish: lemon, chicken, and broccoli. What are some of the more popular dishes? You know, the, the three martini lunch uh, still is uh, alive and well here at the Friars Three lunch, martini so, lunch. So you would still see some of the larger dishes that maybe in other restaurants you wouldn't see. People have more time uh, to, to, to enjoy the lunch. They have a great, great steaks and chops, and those are our prime rib night. Les Moonves, whenever he's in New York, is always here. That the head of CBS loves that evening. Now you've been a member here for more than 20 years. What is it about it that keeps you so involved? 
I love this club. They do the greatest events in the world. The Friars Foundation helps people all over the city. You know how much great entertainment is taking place in this room? Sinatra performed in this room, I think, three times. Actually, a lot of business goes on in here because you have the biggest producers or agents or stars. Things happen in here. I think we counted what's like 15 major Broadway shows began in this dining room. TV specials were planned here from Al Jolson to Frankie Valli to Frank Sinatra. The singers of this club, over 100 years, have sold like 4 billion records. One of my favorite Seinfeld episodes was all about Jerry trying to join the Friars Club. And you remember he got turned down in the episode. <laughs> yes, that's right. It wasn't you that turned no. him down, was it? <laughs> no. Chairman of the admissions committee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm enjoying every moment of this. A particular picture I notice on the wall. Mr. Danny Aiello, we were talking about him in the car. That's right. The pictures on this wall represent those great artists and performers that we have honored, which is a very, very select few. Yeah. So we roasted Danny, and that was an extraordinary event. We had Elizabeth Taylor on that wall there, Barbara Walters, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, Jerry Lewis, Milton Berle, Matt Lauer, all been honored. Cary Grant, Bob yeah. Streisand. Also, the big, big honor is to have your name on the chair. We just grab a chair from the next table. Humphrey Bogart. Look at a longtime friar. Uh, I was also roasted once. Uh, that chair is Lucille Ball. He's almost <laughs> sitting on Humphrey Bogart's lap in a way. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's been an incredible experience. I've learned so much about the Friars Club. It's been just an honor. It's our pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Celebrity Tastemakers, where you always have a reservation for food and fame. For complete recipes and additional clips not seen on this show, log on to CelebrityTasteMakers.com. Until we eat again, I'm Lisa Mateo. Oh my God, what are you, like a makeup person in the trunk? <laughs> <laughs> and the green room was a gas station. You know, usually when you get a TV show, you gotta get an agent. Well, you gotta have like a mechanic here called AAA <laughs> to get on this show. I've never been on a TV show in a car. We did it, baby! <laughs> <laughs>